Okay, so today is the day I'm finally gonna do the brakes on my Lexus. I've been riding on like bare metal for like at least a month, no, six months maybe. Probably since I bought this car. It's needed rear brakes really bad and I never actually got around to doing it. But I'm gonna do it right this time for once. So the brakes I got are, where are the brakes? Let me go get the brakes, I need to get those. Okay, so here are br the brakes right here. You got some EVC rotors for the rear with some Duralast C-Max pads. I know I'm about to get flamed in the comment section or by anyone who watches this for using Duralast brakes pads. But uh, the goal with this car originally was to be like the ultimate daily. I bought these parts probably a couple months ago. I just never had time to put them on. And uh, being an ultimate daily, I thought it would be kind of cool to have brake pads that I had a warranty on that I can constantly swap out whenever they got close to going bad. Because, you know, that's a thing. But since I bought those, I bought this, which is my uh, Shitbox SVT Focus. And so this is going to be the new daily, and I'm not too sure what to do to this one. Maybe boost it daily? I'm not too sure. Anyway, uh, step one, jack up the car. I'm sure you know how to do that. Step two, get off fat ass wheels. And step three, do brakes. the next one. Well, here's my tire. I'm going to go keep this nice and safe so it doesn't get too messed up. Thank God this thing's heavy. Okay, so step one, there should be two 17 millimeter bolts holding the caliper on the back right around here. Let's get that one in there and go yeet us. So yeah, the two 17 mils are going to be behind the caliper, one up here on the top. <laughs> that was definitely rust holding it together. Okay, so here's the caliper coming out. Holy shit. That's really bad. It's really bad. Now let's pull off the shoulder. Front doesn't look too bad. The back is just gone. Just absolutely gone. Okay, and now for the brake clean. Oh, this side actually has pretty good pads, but, the, but this side's not even that worn, which is kind of crazy. Did you only replace one side? So here's my actual brake caliper tool. Uh, I specifically bought it because my other one wouldn't work on this particular vehicle. So pop this in there, just like so, and squeeze. So I'm popping it right in here, in between the two pads. I'm going to twist on here to open it right up. I'll put that one back over here. And now it's time to pull off this rotor. Oh, parking brake is on, let me take that off. Those are... Wipe the caliper down or the this new rotor will break clean. Just to make sure there's no residue left on it or anything like that. So the next step is to pop this head right on here, just like so. So that goes in. What I'm gonna do next is actually bolt the caliper back in here, uh, put some Loctite on these nuts, and tighten my bolt to about 77 foot pounds of torque.
Okay, our next step is to pull this guy out right here. This one should just go. This is actually not properly installed, so. the old pads. These pads are actually in much better shape than the pads on the other side. It's kind of odd to be totally honest with you. And the other side pads are completely destroyed. So these new pads come with this uh, brake or this grease, right? We're putting some on the edge right here. Here. Slide this one right in here, just like so. Okay, so on the other side, the brake pads just slid right in, nice and easy. Like this side, I think there's gonna need to do a little cleaning to get the pads to go in, just to decrustify this general area. And I'm hoping once that's done, it'll go right in. Okay, so I find myself in a bit of an odd predicament, right? On the other side, the brake pads went in just fine. They were nice and smooth. I didn't have to put any force to force the brake pads in. I've already cleaned the interior cut of the caliper, made sure there's no debris. And these, the old pads, go in nice and smooth. No hanging up, nothing, right? But when I try to put in these new pads, on this side, it does this. It gets stuck right there. And I have to like whack them in a bit to get them to go in. However, on the other side, I did not have to do that. So I'm not too sure what's going on here. Maybe if I put them in and then they just they like work themselves out or whatever. My issue is I don't want them to freeze up inside the caliper. So I'm gonna put them in and see if they actually like start to go loose after a while or see if I have a bigger problem. Because I think this car has a lot more work done on this side than it has on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is put the lubricant on the side of the pad, on the calipers and everything. So put some on down on the bottom, at those four little spots where you see the, the brake pad will rub. And whack it in a little bit. I hope my issue is fixed by this. Sincerely hoping I'm not screwing up as badly as I think I might be. Okay, now for the other one, let's do the same. Okay, so go right on there. My question is, how worried should I be about this? Worst case scenario, my brake fails on this one particular caliper. I realize it and I can fix it. But I'll be coming back to check on these in a couple weeks. But you can definitely see that there is an issue right here where they don't line up flat. So what I'm thinking is, I'm really apprehensive on where this is gonna work. Okay, so what I ended up doing is actually taking these pads in and out, in and out, in and out to the point where they actually go in and out a little bit smoother now. Just a little bit. They're still kind of difficult. I'm still not completely where very well trusted on terms of how easily they'll move back and forth, but they seem to be moving back and forth at least now. So maybe that'll be it. Uh, but next step, I'm not too completely sure. But I've had to look up the actual diagram online. I'll put it up right here. And that is to place the actual little screw thingy, just like that, into the base. 
those little two pads, just like that, and then pop them right up in there. So the idea is that this little spring should have them or be applying enough force to push them back and forth. And the next step, I'm going to be putting this little pin through here. like that and next is to get this little clip thing the anti squeal bracket is really what it's called okay, so this part is kind of difficult right now once this is in here the main idea is that you need to push down and inward on this while pulling this one out so this one goes out like that just like that now you grab that push it down and then that, like that. So then that is in there. Just like that. So once this groove is lined up on the second notch right here, and once these two grooves are lined up with the grooves in the actual brake pad, that should be done. I'm just pop it down a bit more. It should be good. Okay, now last step is to torque down these lug nuts. I checked for the factory manual online. It says anywhere between 77 to 80 foot pounds. I'm gonna go with 80. Or no, 76 to 80. I'm gonna go with 80 just to be a little more secure. I don't think an extra three foot pound will cause too much damage. Here's 80 right here. And remember, always tighten in a star pattern. Because you know, that's a thing. Okay, that should be done.